Well, last talk of the day is me, Eric. Um, I'm going to talk about what I'm doing in my spare time with Lua, opposed to uh, what I'm doing in uh, in my profession. So um, this is a talk about uh, about robots. A quick uh, quick update on me. Uh, I'm not that active on the list uh, these days, um, but I've been using Lua since '97. Uh, I think uh, one of my first posts on the Lua list was how do I delete the contents of a global variable? And some wise guy replied that setting it equal to nil was a good idea. Um, back in the days I did a uh, distribution that had multiple states um, made obs obsolete by uh, Lua 4. I'm working at uh, eFocus, I've been there for way too many years now. Uh, we are doing business applications uh, in .NET and we once did a huge business application in, in Lua called uh, Uco. Mm. Since uh, eFocus is, is paying uh, for the plane ticket over here, I'm just giving a quick, uh, quick plug. Uh, saying that we, we're building a business application ERP software for banks and for shipping companies. Uh, we have been using Lua for something called Ucore, a business uh, framework. We have a web server running that has a report generator written in, uh, in Lua inside it. We have uh, our complete uh, built server environment is written in uh, in, uh, in Lua and is controlling Visual Studio build servers and testing and uh, deployment and stuff like that. Uh, and we are currently working on a code generator that from, a, from Lua scripts that basically defines application screen dumps uh, everything, generates uh, code for uh, a lot of different platforms, um, .NET code. But, uh, Still, the, the generator and the, uh, all the templates are written in Lua. But enough about that. Robots. Um, me and my brother-in-law uh, built our first robot in '95. We competed in a competition for the first time in '99. Uh, and we have built this great robot and we started it and it drove four meters and then it uh, was out of battery. <laughs> um, so that didn't go well. The next year we uh, did much better. We had Lua on board, we won the competition and um, the robot I have here is the, uh, the fourth incarnation of a robot where Lua is the main uh, language, the main, main environment for, uh, for driving all the, uh, the robot logic. And all our robots is na are named Crash Ivan. And it's not Crash Ivan 1, Crash Ivan 2, Crash Ivan 3, it's just Crash Ivan. And uh, let's see if I, I plug in the, uh, the sound. Okay, well, so maybe uh, the Oregon. Possible aspect change on target. Sonar Kana. Current possible target say based on bearing rate. Come to my crazy Ivan. All stop, good quiet. All stop, Ivan. Answers all stop. Russian captains sometimes turn suddenly to see if anyone's behind them. We call it Karezia Ivan. The only thing you can do is go dead, shut everything down, and make like a hole in the water. So what's a catch? Catch is a boat this big doesn't exactly stop on a dime. And if we're too close, we'll drift right to the back of them. So we're naming a robot after a 
crazy uh, Soviet U-boat uh, operation, uh, we thought that was that was a good idea because the robots, in many cases, does not exactly do what we think they will do. They make crazy turns, and uh, that's the origin of the name. The competition is called DTU Robocop. Uh, DTU is uh, the Danish Technical University in Copenhagen, and um, they have held this competition since '97. Uh, it's a three-day event, uh, and we, when 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 we try to explain it, the, the easiest way to do that is to compare it to Formula One uh, race. Day one, you come, you set up, the course is built, you have access to the course, you, you, you figure out if your robot can do what it needs to do, and you program, you tr uh, tweak the mechanics and so on. Day two is the qualification round. Typically there's uh, around th 30 robots in the competition, so on day two, the, um, the field is actually uh, cut down to 15 robots, so only the 15 best robots go on to the final day, uh, the big day, uh, the third day, where there are two, two runs and each, uh, and, you, and you score points, I'll show that in a minute, and the, whatever score you get, the best score you get is what's counting. There's a lot of TV show with robots, which are more uh, remote controlled uh, cars than anything else. In this case, when we say robot, we mean robot. You put it down on, this, on the course, and there's no communication with it after that. Uh, so everything the robot should do should be programmed uh, and uh, taken into account. And there are a lot of different things happening uh, on, on the course. This is the, the course from 2011, and, and it changes every year, uh, but there are some, uh, some things that survives um, from year to year. Robot starts out of the, uh, the starting area, and the floor is just uh, a white floor. Uh, the gray areas are tiles on the floor that has a different color. Um, the black line is uh, inch and a half uh, strips of uh, duct tape, black. So the first thing the robot needs to do is to be able to see the, the, the line on the floor follow the line, and it's a bit curvy, so uh, robots that are not able to follow the line will drive off at the start. And then the first uh, point, all these yellow uh, lines are basically arcs that you drive through, and every time you drive through an arc, you get a point. Uh, first one is the guillotine arc, so there's a guillotine coming down if you're not driving fast enough. Uh, and the funny thing is that especially robots made out of Lego has a tendency to drive slowly and uh, the guillotine has been responsible for uh, cutting uh, Lego robots. It's not, it's not cutting, it's just going down so slowly, but uh, it's always fun to see what's happening there. Then this one is actually a ramp up. So this area up here is elevated for uh, two, three feet uh, high. Um, out here is a, uh, uh, a balancing board. So as soon as the weight distribution uh, changes, the board will fall down with the robot on, of course. Uh, on the uh, on the wrong side of the the uh, the center of gravity, or what we call it, the center of balance, there's a golf ball uh, lying on uh, on the line. So 
if your robot has the ability to pick up the golf ball and uh, holding, holding onto it, it can go back up somehow and placing the golf ball in the uh, golf hole that's right on the edge and there's no, uh, there's no protection for, for falling down. There's another golf ball sitting here that also will give you a point if you can put that in the hole. Uh, ramp down again or go down a flight of stairs if your robot is up to the task of uh, driving downstairs. Then the number seven is uh, the speedway. So you, if you drive from seven and up and around and through number eight and back onto the, uh, the thing with the, with the green dot, then if you can do that in under seven seconds, uh, you get three points and two points with, uh, under 10 seconds and one point under 15 seconds or something like that. Uh, number nine is the, uh, the rotating X. So there's like a, an, an X with a the double ended X that rotates and you have to drive uh, through it uh, at, at, the, at the right time. Number 12 is a simple maze, but there are no line, there's no line on the floor, so you have to navigate the maze. Uh, without having a line to help you. Number 11 is a tunnel that has a, a door on each end that opens outward. One of the doors is a bit longer than, uh, than the width of the tunnel, so if you can drive in and push the door or somehow pull the doors open, you can drive through the tunnel. All these, like the tunnel, are two points and um, there's golf balls at one point, so there's an extra point besides the yellow ones. And then you finished up there, you go down here. Uh, there is a simpler challenge in driving the last step without the line. Number 13, um, the, the standard arcs, but there are uh, an LED strip with uh, red LEDs on it, and one of them is blinking, meaning red light, so you have to drive around that one and through the other one. But you don't know which one until the robot is there and the robot will have to look at it and see uh, which one is uh, blinking. 14 is goal, and there are two points for, uh, um, for getting all the way to the goal. The basic principle is that if your robot is not very capable of doing tasks, you, you should just be able to keep right whenever the line is uh, splitting. And then you'll basically go up the ramp, down the ramp, and around and to the goal. And then you can select whatever you need. There's no requirement in, uh, in what order you do the stuff. Only that if, you're have, if you have entered the goal, you're finished. Our first robot with, uh, with Lua was uh, our 2000 model. We were running a uh, Motorola Cold Fire evaluation board, um, 54 megahertz. We had three PIC uh, 16C84 processors on both, one for controlling engine, one for controlling our line sensor, meaning uh, a strip of LEDs uh, that we looked at the line on the floor, and one for handling uh, some distance measurement sensors. A battery and, and a serial cable to a PC running uh, some sort of a terminal thing. It looked like this. This is a high-tech, I mean, you know, this is very, very low-tech. Um, Wheels from something, a remote controlled uh, thing, it's a MDF uh, piece of wood and 
some stuff to uh, hear on all the, uh, the crazy electronics. Electronic screwdrivers, uh, the small, uh, small one we just cut off the uh, battery department and plugged the wheels on, on the end and mounted it beneath the, uh, the robot with, uh, with strips. The third wheel is for, uh, from an office chair or something like that. You can see the sensor up in the top, there are five uh, infrared LEDs and five uh, infrared uh, receivers, uh, photo transistors. Oh. Um, so each LED uh, lights to the floor and the other one, uh, the photo transistor measures the uh, amount of light returned from the floor. And this one was actually running in a place where there were black floor, where, so there was some white uh, tape on black floor. And one of the challenges for this, one of the special challenges was a place where they put black tape on the black floor. Uh, so it, from a data processing perspective, that was like seeing the line line in the noise levels. Um, that was funny. These are uh, distance measurements uh, sensors. So we were running on, on, on this uh, coal fire evaluation board. The only thing we had on it was a lure. Um, there were a uh, custom C runtime that covered just the basics we needed and we have a small uh, bootloader so basically the, 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 the robot started up and a modified version of Lua.c was our prompt uh, and uh, everything was done through, um, through a terminal. Still in 2000 this was a huge benefit compared to uh, programming something, compiling it, generating a flash uh, image, connecting the flashing uh, equipment to your microcontroller, flashing and then booting up. So we can make changes so much quicker than all our competitors because they had to go through this entire process uh, each time they just wanted to change a simple uh, thing. No floating points, so everything was done uh, with integers. Very simple uh, state list, a, uh, an array of uh, strings with Lua codes, and um, the state machine would just pick the next thing to run um, whenever something uh, exited. One of the, uh, the worst thing that could happen to a robot in this condition is that it's standing still. Uh, it's better that it runs and just, if it sees a line, follow it. It might generate points. So whatever happens, the robot should never stop. So between all these, the robot is running. It's, the robot is not stopping uh, because what if there is a bug in the next entry? So just keep the robot running see what's happening. Catch it if it's driving over a cliff. Since it was all integer, uh, these, you see one, two, three, four, five areas are corresponding to the, uh, the uh, photo transistors. Um, One very, very strange thing we had was that everything was doing great, the robots were running, and suddenly it ran off the line. Um, and it, it was strange because everything was working, and in some cases it ran off, in other cases it didn't. And what was actually happening was that at some point in time, Lua decided garbage collection. We need to collect some garbage. So we were started doing garbage collection. This is on a CPU without uh, mirror-managed uh, units, so garbage collection was quite slow. 
And if that happened just in the time where the robot was told to make an adjustment to lift, it will then do that adjustment instead of uh, doing that for 20 milliseconds or whatever, it will do it for half a second. And half a second is enough for, for that uh, not very wide sensor uh, and a, a tape, uh, duct tape line that is almost as, as wide that is off the, off the line. And then it looks at the floor and sees that looks like a line and drives somewhere off the cliff. So what we actually very, very pragmatic uh, did was that we paused the robot whenever we needed to do a, a garbage collection. <laughs> so the robot's arriving, half a, half a second, and then <laughs> continued. Congrats. Yeah. So a very, very physical uh, visualization of garbage collection. It looked like, I don't know, it was a very, very strange robot, but from a result-wise, this was the best robot we ever built. No, nothing has come close to this one. It may have something to, to do with the fact that this was built pre-kits and, and stuff like that, so time was not an issue. Um, it was way too slow. They, uh, they changed the rules so that slow robots would not gain that many pro, uh, points simply because this was very efficient but very, very slow. And the, uh, the, the university decided that they want more action. So they started in the following years to reward more points for, uh, points for speed. We have a lot of stupid design decisions uh, in this, meaning that... Uh, some of the electronics were running on unregulated uh, power, and uh, so everything was uh, sensitive to battery uh, battery charges. Um, we had a checklist of a pre-flight checklist stuff we needed to make sure were done. That two two uh, A4 sheets of paper with stuff that we needed to make sure and do before we started the robot. It was insane. Um, so we decided that we want to build a new one. It has to be better, faster, and um, <sighs> hmm. Better, faster, bigger, easier, uh, and all those uh, buzzwords. Uh, now built in aluminum, it was heavy. It had a lot of power. Um, almost uh, broke uh, Roberto's legs at the row uh, at the workshop in 2006, I think, or scared him anyway. <laughs> GX main board, an SSD hard drive, which in 2003 was not that common. We had uh, Wi-Fi, special uh, stuff from Nokia, and I spent I don't know how much time getting Nokia's uh, Linux drivers uh, to work in that time. But anyway, uh, we had multiple power sources, so uh, we could charge and run and. Uh, uh, very, very sophisticated. Um, even had uh, the possibility of using a camera uh, as input, but didn't really have the CPU cycles to, uh, to support it. Uh, here's a picture from, um, from a workshop. Uh, it still looks very complicated. And a camera edition. Now, actually, a different layout from the last one. See the big, bulky uh, Nokia Wi Fi uh, adapters. Uh, 
Um, these two, you remember the tunnel with the, with the doors? They were metal, so uh, we... One day, basically, uh, my mother-in-law had on her fridge like, this stupid magnet uh, figure sitting on, on a spring, and we stole two of them and mounted on, on the front, and uh, that could actually grab hold of the, uh, the metal door on the tunnel, and we try out to it, connect the magnets, and slowly back out, and uh, thereby opening the doors. This one uh, had Lua 4, and then uh, later on in, the, in this life, Lua 5, running a Linux 2.4 modified kernel to get around the uh, stupid 100 hertz scheduler uh, due to the fact that we had serial communication with, uh, the, uh, with the electronics. A nice uh, NCOST based uh, interface and a state machine that we can actually uh, step into a certain place so we can place the robot and telling that now we are here in these conditions, continue the run from, from this point. So physical debugging and what's happening at this point uh, in time were, were much easier. A much nicer uh, state machine. So suddenly it's a table with a... Uh, with parameters in, uh, and this is this is typical uh, stuff that is gets programmed in the middle of the night. That we start out and say, okay, this is a very international project, so we have to write everything in English. And then suddenly, it says trappe, which means uh, stairs. <laughs> And we see here, to the finish, fake, meaning that no matter what, just continue. Drive, 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 and then if somebody picks it up uh, and turns off the power, it's probably done. The, uh, the other Lua code has, has, uh, has also progressed a lot from the only one. Uh, some of the principles are exactly the same. Basically, Lua code has survived between robots. Um, and I actually have a movie of that one. So I what comes now. The beeping. The great guy then, we set it in by again. Uh, the beeping was that we didn't really have an interface like a button to press on it to start. So it beeped and then we did some magic ho hey, hand movements uh, yeah, in, in, in front of the uh, distance sensors. Yeah, Sean Connery. Nemli. So do I But there is at some point a Russian U-boat that follows them. I'm just explaining yeah, the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red October. I'm just explaining the plot of Hunt for Red it has to go all the way through, so now it looks at the uh, live scene. This was a blinker, so I cannot go through that one. I have tried to park a Toyota Prius. This is nogle lunde sådan derude. Det er noget den selv gør nemlig. Det er noget den selv gør nemlig. Det er noget den selv gør nemlig. Men I har heller ikke øh, pillet ved den her i dag? Jo, selvfølgelig. Vi har skruet på noget heroppe ved golfholden, der ikke kom i hul, og forhjul, der kom i, i hul i stedet for. Så, øh... I skulle godt tage chancen, selvom I sådan er lidt erfarne, om ikke ældre. Jamen, det er os, der har erfaring, vi kan godt kode uden at teste det. 
Well, right. it's missing the golf ball, but it, the robot has no idea that it's missing the golf ball. But hey, it can be that we can go over the hill anyway. Our problem is that this line sensor we have, den har været med i fem år, og vi er ikke så gode til at bygge nogle linjesensorer, så vi sender rigtig meget strøm ud i lysdioderne i den. Så de er ved at være brændt af. Og det gør, at øh, for eksempel, hvis vi skal se bolden derovre, så kører vi den hvide streg her, og ser kanten mellem fliserne og det hvide. Så tæller vi, så kører vi et vist stykke frem, og så er bolden ligger der. For vi kan ikke se bolden. Og nu er vores sensor i stykker, så vi kommer lidt længere ind her, så vi kommer lidt... Oh. Se nu der. Det, det er også derfor, at den er gået lidt i stykker. Den tager sit point og ryger ud igen, eller skal vi simpelthen tilbage og, øh, og tage nummer to? Den glemte vi snart. Så når vi hit et uh, uh, place, hvor line er split, så er det sådan, at det er en golfplæne. Det er næste step af den state machine. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, it's a state, that has a task, that's specific in time, or Anything else? Let's see if it's able to grab this golf yeah. ball. No. Yeah. No. Can you open? Are they fit? They have their own will. They don't know what's going on. Ay, good for six. Nice to see you. At this point in time, this robot was actually uh, uh, worn out. Uh, this is from 2007, the last year it ran, but it was the only v video I, I could find. Uh, and, and worn out in the aspect from mechanical, but also uh, like the um, LEDs uh, um, that uh, lights down on the, on the line, that they were simply worn out, so uh, it, didn't, it didn't do that well. And another thing that sort of complicated uh, stuff from when uh, grown-up boys uh, are playing is that suddenly there's a lot of not so grown-up boys uh, around. Uh, so we cannot sp spend the same amount of time on this. Uh, so we decided to build a new one and it has to be better than this one. This one was still too complicated. Still too complicated. Uh, sensors were worn out and uh, we had a lot of custom made electronics that we didn't document. We didn't build two of a kind when we were at it and, and stuff like that. Um, still needed to basically uh, Uh, put in a keyboard and a, and a display in order to boot it and stuff like that. So we wanted to build a new one, the 2008 uh, version. This time it built in a PVC. Um, again, a, a, a Mia PC board. Uh, this time the, the Nano ITX board, so it's even smaller, a faster processor. Uh, better battery uh, stuff, uh, fantastic power supply. If you ever play around with uh, putting PCs in strange places and need a, uh, a power supply, look into the uh, automotive stuff because they make power supplies that can survive the electronic uh, electrical system in cars. And fantastic, fantastic thing. Um, We decided that we don't want sensors anymore, everything should be camera based. So the robot should just have a single camera and everything should be done with the camera. No sensors, no distance uh, measurement, nothing of the kind. Uh, everything on camera. Uh, and for some strange reason, reason we ended up having an internal ethernet network in the robot between the uh, components. Uh, So instead of zero ports, uh, GPIOs and stuff like that, uh, everything talked uh, TCP IP. Um, and this was how it looked in 2008, not really finished. Uh, this is 
2010, much more finished, I think. We are lucky, um, in a slide or two. Um, we installed uh, Windows XP on it with uh, .NET. We installed Visual Studio 2008 on it. Uh, we installed uh, MP Lab for, for programming the uh, PIC-18 processor on the uh, controller board. Uh, what we wanted was a complete self-contained robot, meaning that the only thing that we would need is something where we could do a remote desktop connection to a robot. Any, anything else should be in the robot, yeah? Oh, that's a good question. Um, because at that time I was uh, doing some other projects with uh, with Lua in uh, in .NET, uh, managed uh, Lua code, and that combined with the fact that there were some very very nice uh, image uh, libraries available for .NET uh, sort of uh, made and, and again from the aspect that this should be very easy because uh, PIC programmers in, in Linux is suddenly complicated uh, but in, in Windows is, is a piece of cake so from that aspect, it was it has to be very easy because kits, uh, time, and all that. So it was running Lua as a managed uh, .NET assembly. Um, we use something called aforge.net, which which is a very very nice uh, imaging library. We built a uh, editor based on the uh, ever so popular Chintilla uh, control. Um, and we changed the way the robot worked into a, a frame base because if we didn't get a frame from the, from the camera, we didn't know what to do. So the camera was suddenly the driver of everything. Uh, more and more Close resembles to uh, to rendering uh, pipeline basically, but the the other way around that we started with a picture and created a a, a nice uh, user interface with camera preview and the uh, in this case now uh, complete Danish uh, state list and sensor inputs and stuff like that and the very important panic button that would kill all engines and stuff like that, because this one was fast. Actually, just one more thing that we, what we could do with this one, which we uh, really like, was that we could record uh, all the images that we got from the camera. So we could do a run and record all the images and then run a simulation. Uh, change the program and then actually use the, all those image capture to do a simulation and see if we could get the robot to ch we couldn't get the robot to change behavior but get a different result in the place where uh, it suddenly went wrong. And we actually created a, a salt where, where we could have a lot of machines sitting on the uh, on the network that would get those images and do offline processing and uh, that was they were finished. State editor. Um, basically, again, e each uh, each state should have a function called frame that would be called per every time we received a frame from uh, from the camera. Um, this one is a simple uh, rotate. So it has to rotate a certain uh, number of frames. Uh, so when it's hitting hitting a, a, a line split, it has just has to rotate a bit so make sure it's tracking the right line. You know, classic, classic in Robocop. So this is uh, from two thousand ten. 
Ja, det er jo 12. gang. Mm, mm. Let's... You see, the kids are even here. <laughs> And uh, I think he's asking them uh, how much they work with us. <laughs> That's, That's a very nice sound. Next jul. Det er en meget spektakulær løsning. Jamen, det var noget med, og den kan faktisk køre rigtig, rigtig hurtigt, så vi har forsøgt... This is not even top speed. This one is very, very fast. ...til hver eneste jul. Det er det mest målrettede, vi har set i dag endnu. Det var bare spildtiden. Lad os se, om vi kan. Yes! Det vælter ind med point her. Per tid, senhed, så er det i hvert fald point indsamlet, vi har haft i dag. It's faster than the cameraman. Ja, pas på. Den prøver at nå det til de 15, tror jeg, Gud hjælp mig. Min sanden, om ikke der var et øh, hastighedspoint. Everything is done with the camera, so... It's doing image recognition. Ja, det skal være, være vaks her. Fordi det går da stærkt med at komme omkring på banen. <laughs> Crazy Ivan. Det var jo næsten en magtdemonstration på den. So, uh... Last year, this, on, on to this point, the presentation has been more or less the same. Um, sorry for the couple of guys who have already seen it. Um, I ended my presentation with this slide, saying that uh, what, what should we do? And we were playing around with uh, 3D missions uh, based robots, uh, either that funky uh, camera there or the uh, Kinect, uh, which is pretty cool also. We want it to be faster, smaller, just as easy. I think the last one was very, very easy. Uh, Self-contained is just a nice thing that you can pull out of the box and it will actually work. You don't have to do a lot of stuff and remember what sort of driver or environment you had installed on your PC and what PC had the programmer on, where's the cable and all that crazy things. And then the last uh, item, uh, 3D printed. Um, yeah. 3D vision, um, not on this one. It requires a lot of power and uh, Uh, most of the uh, of the shell 3D uh, cameras are not really built for moving the camera. They are okay for a moving uh, target, but moving the camera, where the entire image frame is changing uh, from frame to frame, with motion blur uh, on the entire image, is uh, it's difficult. We also uh, let go of faster for now, but we did say yes to the 3D printer. So Crazy Ivan 2012 edition, which is or the one sitting here, is built without any custom electronics. Everything here is, uh, is off the shelf parts. Um, And it's uh, built almost without uh, soldering. I have to uh, to solve the uh, the power cables to the to the motors and stuff like that. Otherwise, nothing. We're running a Raspberry Pi, just because. It's so uh, it's the new black. We have a standard webcam. Uh, I think this one is an HP. Uh, We have a LiPo-based battery uh, with solar cells. Again, just because. 
and uh, all the uh, so far all the white uh, parts are 3D printed, and uh, we're working on 3D printing the uh, the engine compartment also. So not really uh, anything to do with the Lua, but. Uh, this is the new toy from home, and it's actually very, very good with kids. Just a quick uh, suggestion. You can print a lot of fun toys that kids love this machine. It's printed in something called PLA, which is a, uh, a plastic that doesn't improve the environment. You know, it's built, built from coal, I think, actually. And we can take a look. There isn't uh, any lure code in 3D printing yet. Uh, it's mostly Python. Just, I don't know why. But, uh, that's just the way it is. No, it's actually printing that specific part here. So there are a, a compartment inside to hold the battery and access to uh, to different uh, different parts of the, uh, the mechanics. That one took about 10 hours to print. We're running uh, Linux on, on the Raspberry. Raspbian, as it's called, uh, the distribution. Um, I'm currently using uh, LuaJet, um, AppGet, LuaJet. Uh, we're using Open uh, Computer Vision, uh, OpenCV library for uh, computer vision, which is very powerful but not nearly as nice as the A Forge stuff. And we're currently in the process of creating a, an I square C based uh, communication library for uh, for sensors. So basically, all sensors are setting on the I square C bus. And motor controller, display servos, sensors, everything, standard components bought at a, a China based uh, electronic store. I think uh, Fabian is going to show different parts of uh, pieces of electronics like that tomorrow. <laughs> One thing that we have always talked about but has not really been an option due to kind time constraints and stuff is that building more than one. So building a, a soccer team, building uh, five robots that will together do uh, do some stuff uh, that is on our to-do list. Uh, playing around with a lot of different sensors, of course. Uh, perhaps looking into uh, boards with a little more power than the Raspberry Pi. Um, and uh, also the uh, the Lua schedule and, and stuff by Shiro looks uh, very interesting uh, to use as a base for this. Um, and in another, another place I have played a lot with, uh, I don't know if you've seen Google's uh, Blocky, which uh, basically is a visual programming thing for kids. Uh, a bit like the Lego uh, or uh, NXT stuff from Mindstorm or Scratch, if you know about that. Uh, but allowing uh, kids to play with the robots. My son, uh, 
who is three and a half, is playing with, with this one in a simple remote control program where he has the PC and the arrow keys, and that one is driving around in the living room, and, and he's sitting on a, on, on a chair way secure, so he, he's not driving into himself, which is the big scare, and he loves it. I'm playing around with it. So it, it would be fun to actually uh, see if I could do some uh, visual programming for environment for, for the kids. We have had, this is the fourth robot with Lua and uh, with, with the doing, a, why are we using Lua and not a whole lot of other stuff? And uh, one of the main reasons is that we can create very complex logic and very complex data structures. Uh, on the fly, meaning that we know that we have half an hour to something starts and we need suddenly see we can solve something by collecting some statistics and doing stuff on it and, and so on. And, and doing that in those environments that are uh, the primary environments on a microcontroller or an embedded environment is just too cumbersome to uh, to complete tasks like that in, in that time. And the whole you no know, recompiling, flashing, uploading stuff, a lot of the other platform has been able to do that now, but in the start that was a real, uh, real advantage for us. And the funny thing, apart from the, the joke with the, with the garbage collection, Lua is fast enough for these kind of things. The fastest ro robot, the 2008 edition, were running managed Lua and .NET, which is not very fast if you look at it from a uh, performance measurement uh, perspective, but it was fast enough to process the uh, 30 frames a second that a uh, standard web camera will, will give you. And for us, it's it's it's, uh, it's a new meaning to the portable code because we have this is the fourth robot and it's the fourth uh, different way of implementing um, engine uh, communication, uh, implementing sensor readouts and all that stuff. Um, but since our high level code, our logic is in Lua, we have basically just been able to move code from robot to robot, even though they're completely different uh, uh, computer environment, completely different uh, technical and mechanical layouts, but on the high level logic, it's actually uh, reusable. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to workshop with this one and I'm just going to finish a lot of stuff and it was being great and we could do a demo and put tape on the floor and uh, then reality sort of hits. So, um, and uh, KXCD always nail it. So this one won't do very much, but the few things that it will do, I'm... I'm in, will gladly show you. Oh, oh yeah, let's stay in my mouth. And, 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 and since you have been catered with uh, very, very nice IDEs and uh, 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 intelligence and what it's all named, I'm just going to stay in the in, uh, in potty. And uh, see, I, I got I got some stuff here. Actually, I forgot to remove the compass. But anyway, so um, everybody knows uh, Nano, right? Uh, simple Lua program. Um, The interesting part is that it will grab 10 frames from the camera and it will time the uh, time it and then show a window with the last one. Just to, yeah. Uh, 
I can try. What was this? Oh, I could actually, uh, do this perhaps. Is this better? So we have two, uh, two modules right now. We have the uh, Lua CV module and our uh, uh, I square C module. Um, it was function to set up the ca camera and grab some frames and show a window. Uh, A lot of debug messages, and we got a nice picture of you guys. Not that big, anyway. Um, let's just see what the next demo is doing. Compared to all the exciting uh, Lua code today, this is very, very basic stuff. Uh, Which one is it? This one. This one will uh, grab the camera again, uh, extract a band of the image, uh, convert that to grayscale, and do a uh, an edge detection on it, and calculating some sums, and we'll probably show a couple of windows. Uh, let's see what's happening if we are doing edge detection on you guys. Again, output from a uh, looking at a, at a uh, at a course that will actually look like this. I have another demo where it's using a um, this one is actually uh, one of the, the stored uh, recorded if, uh, frames from uh, the two thousand eight robot uh, driving up the uh, the ramp. Uh, and um, and then it has grabbed a band uh, across the image and located the line on it. Um, the the next demo. Again, everything we do is we, we do through the uh, I square C bus. That's our connection to uh, uh, to sensors uh, to uh, the the engine engines in this case. So we have created a small function called I square C motor for some reason um, that takes two parameters. It's an eight bit thing. So if we run that. It should turn one motor way up and the other one almost turned on, I guess. Perhaps not. That is almost similar. Let's just go to the last 
thing here just to let you guys off. There, there, there was the program that my son played with the other day. Um, very, very simple remote control program. So depending on different keys, we would, would make the engine go. There is a tradition that we try to uh, to hit Roberto with the robot, but anyway. <laughs> So, uh, any questions? Yeah? Oh. Oh. When you decided to do 3D printing for the most recent one, did you guys consider doing desktop milling at all, or is it just 3D printing was too cool to not do? Uh, well, uh, let, let me put it this way, that uh, I have been fascinated by the 3D printing for a long time, and sometimes you, you need an excuse to get one. <laughs> And uh, the, the classical question at home is, what do you need that one for? And otherwise, I cannot print a robot, and it needs to be. <laughs> so, um, so it's it's since the, the robots are done for pure enjoyment, uh, we tend to to reuse whatever is we find interesting when we're building one. Uh, the same thing with uh, the 2008 that was built in, uh, in, in plastic in PVC, even though that's a very uh, bad piece of plastic. The, the, the way that you can uh, glue it together is very appealing and basically is a, a knowledge that I have gotten due to my interest in uh, saltwater aquariums where all the uh, pipings are done in PVC and thereby I have gained a lot of experience in, in gluing those stuff. Uh, gluing PVC parts together, so. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. But uh, there are still many hours of fun in the, in the 3D printer before that art is uh, mastered. It's, uh, it's, it's a interesting learning curve. Leo? Um, <clears throat> Eric, thank you very much. Great talk. Um, since your last uh, uh, crazy Ivan has only one camera, how exactly does it uh, measures the distance? From the, we make that simple uh, definition that the world is basically two D, and since the camera is uh, fixed mounted on on the robot, basically any pixel in the image is uh, mapped to a specific distance uh, in space. Since we, we are just pretending that the world is flat, completely flat. And in the cases where it's not flat, it's within the margin of uh, arrows anyway. Um, so, so, very pragmatic. <laughs> 